Father, if there's one prayer that a pastor prays, it's that his people's deepest fears will be comforted against your chest and against your heartbeat. That we will live knowing God's heartbeat every moment of every day. So that you can be all that we need you to be. Dank die Heere, dat jy teenwoordig is in hierdie dienst. Dank jy dat jy een afspraak gemaakt het met elkeen wat in hierdie dienst is vir ochend. En Heere, ons is hier om van jy te hoor. We are here to receive, to hear, to be blessed, to be motivated, to be challenged by you and by you alone. So thank you for your presence. Thank you that as we gathered in the name of Jesus, as we've lifted the image of you out of our hearts, that which you've done in our hearts, that which you've blessed us with, that which we're thankful for, as we've made you big in our hearts and we've given expression through song this morning. Thank you that you've inhabited, you've come to live in the praises of your people. Thank you, Heere, that you is. And that you die verskil wil maak wat ons nodig het. Ek bid vir elkeen wat die is vir oogend, en hulle geliefd is wat hulle verteenwoordig, die gebede in hulle harte. Jy weet wat elkeen in die stille donker ure vir hulle self en vir hulle geliefd is bid. Die vreese wat, wat, wat oor hulle kom en die tye waar hulle een bykie ontspan. Ek bid, Heere, dat jy die God sal wees wat, wat hy donker vrees sal wegvat. Be the God that we need you to be. Help us to... To, to receive so much from you that we can't go out of here unchanged. We give you the thanks, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Jude, second last book of the Bible. We're busy working through it. For those of you who haven't realized, we're busy working through the book of Jude. We've been in it for the last two weeks, and this is the third week that we're going into it. And <clears throat> I'm so encouraged by the Word of God. Because the word of God is truth, this waarheid. Amen? Stimulus on? This waarheid. En a prediker is voor een stel om sonne verskoning die waarheid te verkondig. In other words, we mustn't try and soften the truth because of the people sitting in front of us. Because as much as I love you, I fear God more. But I communicate with you because of the love that God has put in my heart for each and every one of you. And so, my heart is full this morning because the message I have is it's not one that I'd like to preach all the time. You know, in the good old days when the, when the pastors used to beat the pulpits, you know, the fire and brimstone guys, he dry of braai Owens. Can I Owens? It's dry of braai, booty. Well, this morning, that's exactly, turn or burn. But it's the truth. And I've been preaching through. And, and what is Hey Jude all about? Okay, remember his name is actually Judas. In the Afrikaans Bible is it most Judas. And his name is actually Judas. But who wants to name their child Judas? Onmiddellik dink jy aan verhaaier en die ou wat, wat Jesus verloon het. En so ons noem nie ons kinders. Ek het al genoem. Ek het al een hond wat ek wou al Judas genoem het. Maar <laughs> dit gaan in sy gehaardheid in, nie die hond nie. <laughs> but we name die Malo instead. But anyway... Um, um, but Jude writes the letter and he says, I want to encourage you. Ek wil julle bemoedig, but, I, but I'm impelled, I'm compelled by the Holy Spirit to share with you. And, and, and the first sermon was, it was a call to fight. It's to fight for your faith with everything that's in you, the first four verses. Because he said there, for certain persons have crept in unnoticed 
Those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation, ungodly persons. And he says, unfortunately, I want to write to you, beloved, I want to write to you loving friends in the Lord, fellow Christians in the faith. I want to write to you and I want to encourage you, but I'm compelled to say to you, those that were warned about have now penetrated the church. The ungodly are amongst us. So I have to write, I have to, I have to tell you this truth. So you have to fight. Because not everybody sitting with you in church is a saved, born again believer. Some sitting in the church, those with you. And your gefaks linies, van hulle, is nie aan ons kant nie. They're not part of the team. He says, unfortunately, I have to write. So I'm calling you to fight. That's the reason you have to fight for your faith. And then last week in Jude 5 through 11, we, we said, how do you fight for your faith? And remember, the most amazing thing that came out of there for me was the truth, divide the truth will set you free or it will judge you. The truth either sets you free, or it brings you under condemnation. And then we, we looked at, 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 at Cain, the folly of Cain, the, the greed of Balaam, and the, the rebellion of Korah, and how, how we need to guard in our faith, how we need to fight against those three things of rebellion, of not submitting, to authority, using your, your influence for personal gain. And Cain's problem was, was, it's my works. It's what I bring to the party. I'm a good guy. Good people don't go to heaven. Believers do. Believers in Jesus Christ go to heaven. And now <clears throat> we come to this section. <laughs> um, verses 12 through 16 of Jude. Verses 12 through 16. But let me make this statement before I read those scriptures to you. Many, many, if not most people who are exposed to the gospel, fall away. Fall back. Meeste van die mense wat blootgestel word aan die evangelie, wat deel word van die kerk, fall back. Pastor, how can you say that? Well, the parable of the sower. Remember the four fields, the four types of ground? What's, what's, the, what's the bottom line of, of, of the parable of the sower? Only around 25% produce any fruit. And all of those fields are in the church. It's not the, some of those fields are not in the, in the, in the world and others in the church. They're all, they're all exposed to the gospel. The, the seed is sown. To all. But out of the four fields, only one produces 30, 60, 90, 100 fold. Only, only 25% produce some, some fruit. I don't know what you think about that. Jesus also says quite plainly in Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14, Jesus says very plainly, He says, Enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life. And there are few who find it. Now, I, I don't want to pick on anyone this morning. But, but just think about if we numbered off here. One, two, three, four. 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 Only all the ones. Or only all the twos. Or only all the threes. Three out of every four. That's why we need to fight for our faith. Scary thing is, scary thing is, at the Bible studies, the life care is this week. If you're not in the life care, please join the life care. 
the life cares this week. We looked at 1 Corinthians, thir- uh, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Test your faith. See that you yourself have Jesus Christ in your heart. And what's the test? The test is quite simple. Have you at some point stopped and asked Jesus to enter into your life? Second point, that's not enough. Because you know you can get an emotional service, but you do them you're so lekker opsweep, and this emotionele besluit, and you come and you heil selfs by the altar. Maar dis alles net emotie, niks geestlik, en niks werkelijk nie, dis alles net emotie. So is nie genoeg om net te sê, het jy al Jesus gevra om die Heere van jou leven te wees? Het jou leven verander as gevolg van die gebed? Het jou leven, het jou waardes, het jou, het jou focus, het jou, het jou denken verander? Is daar iets anders in jou wat nou jou leven bepaal? And are you growing in that thought process? Are you growing in that faith? Because if you're not, you need to test your faith to, faith to see if Jesus is really in your heart or if perhaps you fail the test. And that's why it's a fight. Because many come but few finish. Few finish. Now, that's the good news. Now we get to the bad news. Hello. Are you with me? Now comes the bad news. Now comes the bad news. Let's read it together from verse 12. These are the men. These are the men who are hidden reefs in your love feasts, when they feast with you without fear, caring for themselves. Clouds without water, carried along by winds, autumn trees without fruit, doubly dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea, casting up their own shame like foam, wandering stars for whom the black darkness has been reserved forever. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Okay? So I've only got two points this morning. I've only got two points this morning. What's happening and what's going to happen. So what's happening is in the church, these people who who Jude says, I have to warn you about them. They're already in the church. Yeah, we get them described to us. And then what's going to happen? It was also about these men that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord came with many thousands of His holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly of their ungodly deeds which they've done in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. Him. These are grumblers finding fault, following after their own lusts, They speak arrogantly, flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. That's what's going to happen. What's happening and what's going to happen. But I'm actually tricking you because I've got five points under point one and I've got five points under point two. So I've actually got ten points in my sermon this morning. Isn't that good news? We're going to sit here till at least two. Hallelujah. Okay, and you thought, why did I come to church today? Yeah? Yeah. I, I haven't been for a while and, and I need to be in co- And now he's going to preach. Oh, what a Sunday to come to church. God's good. He's got the appointment with you this morning. Okay, so let's look at the five what's happening. Because if we don't allow our faith to keep on growing and setting us free, <clears throat> we will fall under the judgment and we'll look at what that judgment looks like just now. But before we do that, let's see why it's so dangerous not to keep fighting for your faith. Verse 12, first lot of what's happening, what are these apostates, what are these people who are sitting in the church who've lost the faith, what's the characteristic, what do they look like? They're selfish and they're greedy. So what's happening today? In the church, there's selfishness and there's greed. Pastor, where do you get that? There are hidden reefs. Some of the translations say hidden spots. In your love feasts, when they feast with you without fear, caring for themselves. What what does that mean? Well, 
in those days, jylle sal onthou, in die dag om een christen te wees, het beteken, jy het nabij aan armoede geleef, want jy kon eindelijk vir jouself nie een werk kry, of een werk hou nie, want al die, al die ambachte in die tyd, het hulle afgode wat hulle aanbid het, en, en om, 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 om a, <coughs> to, to work a trade, to, to do anything, in, in the secular world and earn a living, you had to worship the gods of that trade, of that business. So Christians found it difficult to find work. There was lots and lots and lots. You go read Acts. They, they sold all their possessions and dealt out the proceeds from the sale of their possessions amongst the needy and they, they, they kept they take it, took care of one another. And so the love feasts were the church services. Every time the church got together, there was a meal. Sounds like Nazafriatus. Ampus was ons. Okay? As ons by mekaar kom, dan eet ons. En ons eet lekker. Okay? Ons neem ook een offerande op. Nee. <laughs> okay? So, so, but, but they came together and their love feasts were their church services. But those that came, those that were apostate, those that had lost their faith, they came without fear of the Lord. So they didn't come to worship. They didn't come to, to lift the Lord's name up in vain. They came to grab what they could. They came to eat. They came to get. They didn't come to give. They came to get. And my friends, it's happening in the church. People come... Well, I hope he preaches a good sermon. I hope the praise and worship is on par today. I hope that the Sunday school has prepared something that's decent. Where's the, where's the spirit of, Lord, use me? Lord, I'm coming to church. May I just smile at someone and make a difference? May I just, may I just be sensitive to the leading and guiding of your Holy Spirit? May I prepare my heart with a testimony? May my presence there make a difference today instead of... What am I getting out of it? What did they for me for? I mean, it's not a too long prayer. They live for themselves. The world revolves around them. When they mumble and they grumble, we're going to get to that. It's about their needs. It's not about the good of everyone. It's about focusing on what they need to get out of it. That's what's happened. Many churches today. Goes on to say, not only are they the hidden reefs. Now what happens with the hidden reef? Well, you don't see it. You don't see it. And, and what about a spot? Some of, the, some of the translations say, they spots in your love feast. Normally during the week, when Eileen says to me, did you eat today? Then I'll say, yeah, there's breakfast, there's lunch. I haven't had supper yet. When you have no point me. <laughs> okay. But, but you want to make an impression. You, you're going out to dinner. You're going out to a lawny place. Okay, and you put on your best, your moi moys. You put them on and your wife says, there's a spot. Ugh. Okay? When you're sailing, when you're out in the open waters, wherever, and there's a hidden reef, it's a danger. That's these selfish, greedy people. They're amongst us, but they're dangerous. This is about them, not about fearing the Lord, not about honoring the Lord. Not only that, <laughs> they're clouds without water carried along by winds. They're clouds without water, carried along by winds. In other words, they're people of empty words. Because, come on, I don't need to tell you, in a dry season, when you see the clouds rolling and gathering up over the valley, and, and you think, oh, just what my crops, just what the land is. Yeah, they come, yeah, they come. And then the winds carry them up. Huh? <sighs> clouds without rain. Empty promises. People who... Who big talk. Oh, we gotta, we must, we, we're, we're the church, said, man. We're, we're here for you. And they're just pushed along by the next good idea. There's no, no sustainability, no consistency in them. 
They promise this today, and they promise that tomorrow, and they promise this the next day, and they promise that, and they're just pushed along by what's popular, by the wind. They're in the church. That's these people that, that we need to fight for our faith for, because that's what's happening in the church. And then other people, other people in the world are saying, oh, the church, a bunch of hypocrites. Twee gezachte. Ja, hulle beloof nie wereld, maar hulle oordeel nie. Volg nie deur nie, kom nie. Ja, hulle is vol beloftes, vol praat, maar ach nie wat, hulle beteken niks. Wat is die bestaansrecht van een gemeente in een gemeenskap? Om een verskuld te maak in die gemeenskap, nie in die gemeente nie. Hoor jylle? As die dere van hierdie kerk morgen moet sluit, dan gaan die geloofiges een ander gemeente vind. They're going to find fellowship because they need that connection. They know what it is to, to be in the love of the body of Christ. So if this part of the body closes, they'll go find another part and they'll fit in. Because they know what it is to be in fellowship, to be prayed for, to pray for. But if the community doesn't bemoan the fact that a church is closing down, then that church didn't have a right to exist in the first place. It's not about promises. It's about making a difference. It's about standing on the truth, not being pushed by every doctrine and wind and wave. It's about impacting, making a difference. But unfortunately in the church, we sit with people who, if that's what a Christian is, I want no part of it. Empty words. But not only empty words, it gets worse. Okay? Not only empty words. What, what's the next one? Autumn trees without fruit. Doubly dead, uprooted. Now let me just focus on autumn. In the, in the move of a season, what's autumn? Autumn comes just before winter. Okay? Now winter... Uh, you, okay, I know we get oranges and yeah, some, some, some trees are in winter, but, but we're talking about... So autumn is the last time you can harvest something before the winter. In spring you get a chance. In summer you get a chance. In autumn it's your last chance before the winter. If you don't get something off the tree, you're going to starve in the winter. Autumn trees. Last chance trees. Why? Because God's coming back. Here come weer. In die wereld het Jesus nodig. Die wereld het die evangelie nodig. Die, die wereld het liefde nodig. Die wereld het vergifnis en aanvaarding nodig. En die kerk moet die vrug van, van die geest, die vrug van God wees in die wereld. Maar mense kom na die boom en is die herfstboom en as nie vrug nie, maar hy is, hy is dubbel dood. Because he doesn't just not only have fruit, but he has no roots. So he's got no means of pulling any nutrients or any nutrition or anything that he needs in order to produce fruit. And they're sitting in the church, doubly dead. Nie eers hierdie hefs, jy gaan niks hierdie hefs kry, maar jy gaan niks volgende seisoen ook kry, want want die boom is dubbel dood. It's dead pas. Fight for your faith. Fight for your faith. Do you see where we're going? Hold on to the preciousness of Jesus in your life. Fight that the Holy Spirit will remain the one who leads you every day. Don't, don't, don't start with the Holy Spirit. Don't start the, the, the 1500 meters and then play in your barn. in we start following the Spirit, but we end up following dreams. We, we end up following books by strange authors and all kinds of weird and wonderful things. Wow, you've read the Bible, but now you must read this book. What? What book is better than the Bible? Daarin leef waarheid. Die waarheid sal jou vrymaak. Of hy sal jou oordeel. And if you don't like the judgment, don't go find another book that tickles your fancy. Stay with the truth until the truth keeps you on track. It 
selfishness and greed, empty words, empty lives. You see, it starts with, what do I need? It's all about me, myself, and I. And then I become useless to the people around me. How vastly different. Can I read you Psalm 1? Psalm Ian? Can I get for you Yes, just the first couple of verses. Listen to this. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight is in the word of God. His delight is in the truth. And, his law, and on his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree. <clears throat> okay, here's the tree. That other tree is doubly dread, dead. No fruit, no roots. Okay, no fruit, no roots. He is like a tree firmly planted in the streams of water which yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. Whatever he does, he prospers. Come on, you guys with your, your citrus trees, your, your trees that you plant. It takes two, three years for them to produce a full crop or whatever. And then what's their lifespan? They've got a lifespan. And then you as a farmer, you go through your orchards and you say, this block, next year, in the, in the down season, we're taking them out. We're replanting. The tree of Psalm 1 never gets replanted, never gets replaced because he's planted in the streams of living water. It's an eternal giving of fruit, never a replacement. We'll look at Revelation a bit later. It also talks about a tree and a stream and all that, but we'll, we'll get there. Hold on to that. All right, you still with me? You guys are very quiet. Anyway, verse 13 of Jude. This harmony, this unity, this contentment, all the disses. You know when you diss someone? Come on, hey? Have I lost you? Do you know what it means to diss someone? Hey? Yeah, you know what it means. The wife says to the husband, if I get fat, will you still love me? And the husband, full of wisdom, says, of course not. Of course I'll still love you. Nothing that you do. And a little voice from the background pops up, but you're already fat. Dust. Okay? Dust. Taken out. Shots fired. Whatever. Listen to this, wild waves, wild waves of the sea, casting up their own shame like foam. Go down to verse 16. These are grumblers, <coughs> grumblers, moaners, okay? <coughs> they find fault, following after their own lusts. They speak arrogantly. Flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. That's the foam of the sea. They, they, they make a huge noise. They, they, they make an impact. When they arrive, it's... But the foam is just all about them. I can't believe there's no tea. <laughs> Who cares? <clears throat> I can't believe the water wasn't boiling when I got to church this morning. I can't believe that the chairs are set in a half moon and not in straight lines. I can't believe that so-and-so was there again. I can't believe the pastor wore that hideous tie. I can't believe the pastor hasn't had a haircut. I can't believe mumblers and moaners and groaners and all about their lusts and all about them. Waves of the sea. And their foam is just their own shame. Fight for your faith. Fight for your faith. Don't become one of those. And then I suppose the most damning of the five points I want to make is this last one. Wandering stars. 
for whom the black darkness has been reserved forever. Wandering stars. Isn't a star a good thing? Okay? Do stars wander? Not wonder as in think. <laughs> do, they, do they wander? No. Stars stay in their orbits. Hey? They rise, yeah, and they, the navigators, the ancient mariners, they had those funny little round square thing, funny looking things, and they looked through the globe. They navigated by the stars. But a wandering star? Ja, is voor een stel om daar te wees. Nee, wacht, hij is nou hier vanavond. Nee, nee, hij is nou daar morgen aan. Ja. Wandering stars are useless. In fact, wandering stars, we can call a wandering star a shooting star. What do, you, what do you do when you see a shooting star? Who's seen a shooting star? Come on, you guys need to get responsive. All right. What do you say when you see a shooting star? Wow! And then? Nothing. This is gone. These apostates, these people who've lost their faith. Wow! Fight for your faith. That's what's happening in the church. Men and women who come up with ministries and they come up with, with blessing and they come up and they and they impress and they and they wow. No, no, but no. Reserved for them is the outer darkness forever. So there's the five characteristics of the people who've lost their faith but are still in the church. And that's what's happening. Maybe you've been hurt by one of these kind of... You've gone up to someone expecting fruit, expecting a blessing, and you've received nothing. Maybe you've been promised, and the promises just never come through. Maybe when you talk to someone, you start... <laughs> Woo, brother, sister, mother. I don't know if you've ever been in one of those conversations where it doesn't matter what you start talking about, you end up talking about them. You know, I buried my mother last night. Ooh, you know, I haven't buried my mother yet, but the day when I bury my mother, oh, it's going to be a terrible day when I bury my mother. Hey, you haven't met me. Talk to me about I buried my mother. Don't talk about when you're going to bury your mother. No, but it goes about them. Hulle luister, hulle hoor nie ees, wa, waarvan praat jy? Waar hoor praat jy? <coughs> Oeh, ok. Wandering stars are people who have no vision, no continuity, no purpose. But man, they take up your time in the church. So what's going to happen? Let's get a point two. Lot, lot shorter point, there's five points, some points. You still with me? But they're not as long as the first five. Okay. <clears throat> the judgment is coming. The judgment is coming. I read it there from verse 15. Sorry, verse 14. Yeah, man. I saw people get a blood say. It's also verse 14. It was also about these men that Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord came with many judgments of His holy ones, with many thousands of His holy ones to execute judgment. Now, let's just stop there. We know Enoch, eh? Did you find Enoch gehoor? You've heard of Enoch? He's the one who walked with God, and he walked so far with God that when he looked around, he said, Hey, I'm, I better leave you. I'm far from home. And God said, It's okay. You're closer to my house. Let's just carry on. And he never went home. He just went to heaven. Isn't that awesome? Okay? He just walked with God into heaven. He didn't die. Isn't that cool? That's cool. Remember I said to you last week, the rebellion of Korah? The earth opened up and they went living into hell. Okay? Sure. Okay? So, Enoch. We know about him. But nowhere in our Bible do we have this quote. But there is a book called Enoch. And in Enoch 1, 
He's quoting here from Enoch 1. So why is Enoch not in our Bible? Why, 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 is, why is he quoting extra biblical stuff? Well, relax. I do it all the time. I say the Bonner group have done studies and they've come up with this finding. Okay? Or I was reading John Wesley's uh, Perfect Love and John Wesley says in Perfect Love this and this and this. And you're okay with that, are you? So he's just using some extra biblical literature. Acceptable? Are you okay with that? All right. So he says, Enoch wrote about these guys. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. <laughs> Behold, the Lord came. So what's this judgment about? It's a personal judgment. Firstly, it's a personal judgment. God came himself. He didn't send an angel to judge. He didn't send anyone on his behalf. He comes himself. It's personal. I'm not going to send someone to warn you. I'm not going to send someone to take you out. I'm coming to take you out myself. Can't get more personal than that. Not send the hitman. Bring him to me alive. I want the pleasure of killing him. From the Godfather movies and those kind of things, okay? So when God says, this is personal. I'm taking you out. That's the first thing. But it's an inclusive one because he says I come with many thousands, many thousands of his holy ones. Now, who are the holy ones? Angels? Maybe. The raptured church, the church that's gone to heaven and then we come with him on the day of judgment? Maybe. I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. It doesn't matter. I don't care. As long as I'm not on the earth at that time under judgment. I don't care if he uses angels or he uses me. I'm, I'm cool with that as long as I'm on that side. But it's collective. You hear that? He comes, it's personal, but it's collective. And then it's all inclusive. It's complete. He says, coming to judge all. All. Uh, who's included in all? All. You guys, you don't need to go to Bible college. You, you're clever. All means all. Coming to judge all. None are going to escape. Hold on to that. This is, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. That's why Jude, who wants to write an encouraging message, says, I have to write the truth to you. I have to tell you the truth. There's wolves, there's apostates, there's these people, the five that I've just described, the five characteristics. There's these people in the church. You need to fight for your faith. Why? Because what's going to happen? God's going to come for a personal judgment. He's going to take you on personally, and he's going to bring some people with him to help him. And man, no one's going to escape that judgment. And then it's going to be a fair judgment. Who can you let say, Dominic? No one on that day is going to say, This is unfair. What, why are you doing this to me, God? What, what have you got against me personally? How can I say that? Well, listen. He's coming with many thousands of his holy, holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to convict all. The ungodly. Another word for convict is convince. New oortuig. Luister. Ek het jou, I've given you rope. I've given you free reign. Ek het jou, ek het jou tyd gegeen om te, om te belei. Ek het jou tyd gegeen om jou saak recht te maak. Ek het vir jou uitgewees. Ek het, ek, ek het my heilige geest gestuur om jou te oortuig van jou sonde. But I'm going to come to judge all and to convict all the ungodly, of all the ungodly deeds which they've done in an ungodly, now ungodly, that's just duh, an ungodly deed done in an ungodly way by an ungodly person who has ungodly thoughts. I mean, it's just all ungodly, 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 ungodly. You know how long I practice to get that right. But it's going to be a fair judgment. In other words, he's not going to unfairly judge anybody because the truth Go back to our statement. The truth either sets you free 
or it judges you. It either sets you free or it judges you. God says, well, Peter says to us, God would have that none would perish. None would perish. But that all would come to saving knowledge. In Ezekiel, he writes and he says to the people, I don't want any of you, I don't want any sinners to burn in hell. Turn, turn, turn. Because it's a fair God, it's a loving God. The last point about this judgment is, is it's eternal. It's forever. It's an eternal judgment. Look at verse 14, 13. For whom the black darkness has been reserved forever. The black darkness has been reserved for if hell is not forever, heaven isn't either. If hell isn't forever, then heaven isn't either. Because the same words for hell are used throughout the Bible for heaven. The same words for being with God forever are the same words that are used for hell forever. You can't say hell is just temporary, but heaven is forever. Revelation 22, verses 1 through 5. Listen to this. Then he showed me a river of the water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street, on either side of the river, was the tree of life, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There will be no longer any curse. And the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and His bondservants will serve Him. They will see His face. And his name will be on their foreheads and there will no longer be any night. No longer be any night. But for those who are wandering stars, there's a black darkness reserved forever. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads and there will be no longer any night and they will not have need of the light of a lamp nor the light of the sun because the Lord God will illumine them and they will reign forever and ever. Thank you. Amen. The rain forever and ever. Woo! This is good news. Okay. But the alternate, if the truth doesn't set you free, then judgment is forever and ever. So, that's what's going to happen. There's going to be a judgment. It's going to be personal. It's going to be inclusive. It's going to be total. It's going to be all. It's going to be fair. It's going to be forever. Jude writes and he says, I need to tell you the truth. Whether it's good news or bad news, I need to tell you the truth. Because only the truth will set you free. So, application, please fight. Please fight. If you're in the faith, fight to remain in the faith. Fight to remain a part of the minority. It's about entering through the narrow gate and following the narrow way. It's about being part of the 25%. That produces some fruit. Stop, evaluate. It's not the lightning. It's never too late while you're still breathing. Who weet ek God het jou nog een kans gegeen? Die dag wat jy gaan, en jy krijg nog een in, moeilijkheid bro. It's given for man to live once and then, to die, and then, judgment. Let me remind you about the truth of judgment. 
And I close. John 3, 17 through 19. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. He who believes in Him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the judgment. This is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men loved the darkness rather than the light for their deeds were evil. Church, I preach to you. I urge you. I beg you. I beseech you. Smeek jou. Het jou pastoor. As een wat een herderskap, wat geroep is dier God, om sy evangelie te verkondig en sy waarheid vir mense te gee, staan ek voor julle fight for the faith. If you don't have it, fight for it. If you have it, fight to keep it. I know the world's busy. Ek weet, as een oorlog in Rusland, ach in Ukraine, I know that doom and gloom prophets are walking around talking about 40 rand, 50 rand, a liter of petrol, and the, the fiscal effect of what's going to happen Oh, we still going to make a living? Who can ons inset costes for die volgende seisoen kan bekostig? How are we going to, what are we going to, did we know that COVID was good? Did we know about the lockdown in 2019 when, 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 ach, in 2020, March? Did we know it was coming? Did we live through it? Here we are. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know God holds tomorrow. And that day when petrol is 40 rand, 50 rand, ah, today I can't imagine paying that. I don't know how I'm going to live, but that day God will be with me and I'll live. And that day I'll get through it. When the pastor's retreat last week at the Owens began, he was praat, to say, Ach, die Heere is so goed, hy het my al een mountainbike een paar jaar terug gegee. Wie gee om oor brandstofprys? It's just, die hasbesoek is going to take long. Ons gaan terug voortrekke daar toe. Ek gaan by jou kom opsal, <laughs> of uitstal, of I don't know what the word is. Ek gaan oorslaap, because I'm not going to make it to your house and back in one day. <laughs> but you know what? Come that day. Our God is still in control. Our God is still on the throne. Our God is still not come to judge. And on the day of judgment, be found in the faith. Don't let the devil pull you into worrying about tomorrow. Hold on to your faith today. Tomorrow you'll have enough for tomorrow. So what's my sermon title? I've preached it, now I'll give you the title. Why? Why? Who come? That's the answer. That's the question. Why? Why what? Why what, Sean? Why fight for your faith? Because be aware of what's happening in the church. Be aware of what's happening in the church. Those five descriptions that Jude gives us. Why fight for your faith? Because of what's going to happen. What's going to happen? It's going to happen. Don't worry about 40 rand a litre. Worry about God's judgment. Get a bigger perspective. And hold on to your faith in God. Please, church. Not just for yourself. Can you worry only. For the world, for the evangelie, what Christen and nodig het om vir hulle ook hoop en licht te gee, waarheid te gee, 
want hulle is nog vastgevang. And they need to hear the truth that sets free. If we don't go and tell them, they'll never be set free. We need to be in the faith in order to share the truth. Because we serve a God who's a way maker, a promise keeper. If you don't know Jesus, don't die. If you don't know Jesus, find the light. Get hold of the truth because only the truth can set you free. I'm not going to emotionally sweep you to make a decision. If God is speaking into your heart now and you need to, it doesn't matter what you've said yesterday. It doesn't matter. Is it Marky Sark, who you yourself for gegeet, as you yourself as Christen, as you al 30 jaar, 40 jaar in die kerk was, and you het die, jy kom, jy besef nou die waarheid is, dis alleen. Dis nie die waarheid nie. Ek gee voor. I can the terminology, I can I know the, the actions, I've learned the culture, I can fit in. The day is coming. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but the day is coming. And all will be judged if you haven't been set free. And if you've been set free, listen to me. We did it last week. He set them free and then they went through the wilderness. But what did it say? Once he'd set them free, he judged, he destroyed all the who were left behind. The Red Sea, the Egyptian army, wiped out. And then he took them through a wilderness. Yeah, maybe your faith is a wilderness. It's bigi droog, it's bigi nie so lekker nie. Maar as a beloofde land, en die Heere is bezig met jou, bly in die proces. Said it last week. A triumphal procession became a funeral procession. 1.2 million people died in 40 years. That's 80 a day, funerals a day, or seven every waking hour that people died. And as your pastor, I don't want to see you spiritually die. I don't want to have to spiritually bury you. I want you to stay in the process. Fight for your faith. Let's get there together. Let's get there together. Church attendance, tinders, dienstbaarheid, reading your Bible, prayers, that's not a test of your faith. Is Jesus Christ in your heart? Is Jesus Christ in your heart? Father, I pray that so easy to sing that but may it be the declaration of our hearts by faith by faith are you saved through the grace of Jesus Christ not by works lest any man should boast doesn't matter what you've lived up to yesterday today give your heart to Jesus let him in Let him change your life. Let him change your thinking. Let him change your words. Let him change your actions. Let him change the way you look at life, the way you approach life. Let his Holy Spirit come and seal you in your salvation. Help you to choose life rather than death. To lay off that which isn't of God and take on that which is Jesus. And grow every day in the process of faith, in the process of sanctification om dag na dag, meer soos Jesus te wees, om in heilig maak en dagelijks te groei, en ons self oor te gee na die leiding van die heilige gees. <coughs> Father, I pray, be the after speaker, be the after worker. Holy Spirit, come, hear the prayers of each heart. Come and change, come and save, come and transform. Come and renew. We leave this place with a, an assurance of salvation, a geloof zekerheid. But say, I is my God. Jesus is die Heere. Die Heilige Geest is my Leidsman. Hy is my trooste. I is die Ewige Vader, Almachtige God. 
mag die donker vreese van mijn hart, teen, as my, my, my wang teen die haarklop le en ris, mag het bedaar. May I lose myself in Christ. To your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. I worship you.